Hello and welcome to episode 25 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about that companies are lagging on multi-cloud plans. Most companies will have more than one cloud provider, so why do they struggle to evaluate them? Please make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video where Dave talks about his top tip for companies and multi-cloud plans. Hi Dave, great to see you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's good to be talking about multi-cloud again. Just it's one of those topics on the C-Suite that just doesn't seem to come up. And I think most CEOs and C-levels uh, don't really understand what the heck multi-cloud is. It's good to having the discussion. Yeah, 100% on that one, Dave. And so are CIOs not paying attention to the multi-cloud trend then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't think they are. I, I think ultimately uh, they have cloud really kind of on a checklist and they were maybe moving uh, three or four years ago to private cloud and they realized that they were hitting a wall there in terms of feature function capability and they started moving toward public cloud and really had kind of had uh, tunnel vision on AWS as kind of the primary cloud provider. When the reality is it can get additional services from Microsoft and Google and from Alibaba or whomever that'll add additional uh, capabilities to uh, their IT infrastructure at a cost point that's typically gonna be cheaper than if they just uh, go for a single brand technology. So in other words, if I go after AWS, well, AWS may have compelling storage costs, compute costs, and by the way, this isn't, I'm not picking on AWS because this is just an example. They may have more expensive database costs, more machine learning costs could be higher. Uh, some of their analytics costs could be higher. And I might find cheaper and more better fit services from uh, Google and from Microsoft, and therefore I should add them to my catalog. And CIOs just really don't think of that. You talk to them, you know, you say, have you considered, you know, other machine learning systems and other uh, analytics systems, whether they're Microsoft shop or uh, Google shop or an AWS shop, and they typically have it. And so that could save them millions of dollars a year going forward. And in leveraging best of breed technology. And this is the best of breed argument. So 10 years ago, we wouldn't consider not evaluating, you know, dozens of technology on technologies in the market before we make a decision as to the technology we need to leverage within our enterprise, whether it's SAP or ERP or security-based systems or other software systems that are out there. However, these days we have a tendency to want to move to a single provider and it just doesn't make sense. And so you're moving away from best of breed if you're doing that, therefore you're gonna spend more for your hardware and software uh, that you're gonna consume via the clouds. You're not gonna get the best bang for the buck. You're not gonna get the best of breed technology. You're not gonna get the one that best uh, solves the problems you have within your industry. So it's, it's something that should be on their radar screen and it's not for some reason. No, it's, it's um... I think it's a real minefield as well, isn't it? With a whole lot of confusion of, of overall why you're picking your provider and what the, the strengths are of the organization as to why you actually need that provider, whether it's a skill set within the organization or whether it's just uh, your friend on the golf course uh, decided to tell you more about the cloud provider that he's gone with. Um, I think one of the things that I think would be great to cl clear up on the show would be, um, how do you see companies comparing prices or choosing the right services based on their workload requirements? I mean, not only in the moment of now for the business, but also looking to the future yeah it's the old requirements gathering uh, technique we got to figure out where we are and what we need in terms of security and governance and databases and what, what we're coding in now and skill sets that we have existing and if we you know move into AWS what skill set changes need to occur and also moving into Microsoft what skill sets need to, need to occur Google skill set changes need to occur all these things really are multi-variable analysis that comes into you picking technology, but it's, it's nothing we haven't done before. We've gone through this kind of analysis, whether we pick database technology, whether we picked operating systems, platforms, you know, things like that. And in the cloud business, it's even better and more advantageous for us to pick best of breed because it's as a service. We don't have to buy hard, special hardware and software and house it within our data center. In other words, even though we have additional complexity costs in terms of cloud services brokers and cloud management platforms and different skill sets we keep around, there's not an incremental change in cost as it was when we dealt with some of the on-premise systems going forward because we can just consume it as a service. And by the way, there's no reason I can't uh, sign a contract with Microsoft, hook up their services, put it in my catalog, 
and never use their services if it doesn't fit, or the same with Google, or the same with Amazon. So we're just giving them a wider variety of services to pick and choose within the enterprise that they can leverage to attach, attach to their workloads or basically move their workloads to the platforms. They're going to be the best fit in the best bang for the buck. Now, still portability is still an issue. We can't really localize stuff on Microsoft and move it to AWS with, you know, as an easy thing to do. It's going to be a little bit more hard and more costly than we anticipate. But we certainly can think long and hard about where we're going to go in the future and where we're going to be and also understand that if we're going to hook Microsoft up to our catalog, that it really doesn't cost us incrementally much more in terms of cost unless we leverage the technology. And I would love to give it as an option for people in my organization to leverage to make sure they're not using the wrong technology and they're use, instead using best of breed. And we can trade one off against the other. And the other thing is the, the cost. I mean, we're going to spend millions of dollars on cloud-based systems a month you know, going forward. And it certainly would be nice to basically do least cost analysis to find the best storage computing, the best platform uh, to provide this computing, the best networking systems, all these things which are based on demand, you know, versus going to a single provider. And, you know, folks who complain about Oracle and IBM for years, or even some of the Microsoft stuff that's out there, can talk about a single, a single provider that really kind of owns their platform. We're heading down the same route again. Yeah, I agree. It could be uh, turbulent times if you get it wrong, isn't it? It surely is. It, you know, ultimately, it's going to cost you uh, efficiency. It's going to cost you cost to compute uh, units, whether it's storage, you know, whether it's uh, compute time. It's going to cost you uh, productivity, uh, and therefore, and it's also going to cost you agility. You're going to be limited by the single brand com uh, cloud computing vendor you provided. And therefore, your inability to leverage some other brand of cloud computing that's going to better fit your needs and allow you to move quickly is going to uh, uh, limit your capabilities. And it's really going to limit your value in moving into the cloud. So, you know, put this on your radar screen, at least look at it and consider the fact that, you know, we're moving into a multi-cloud world. Uh, chances are you're going to be multi-cloud whether you like it or not. And it's a good idea to have it on your radar screen now to the analysis and strategy so you're moving in the right direction. My big fear is that everybody's going to move to a single cloud provider, localize their workloads on that cloud provider, and be kind of locked into it. And therefore, moving to a multi-cloud environment is going to be cost prohibitive because they made the wrong decision, they didn't leverage best of breed technology, and ultimately it's going to come back and bite them in the butt. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Dave, that was a great top tip. That was fantastic. Thanks very much. Oh, my pleasure. You guys go out and look at multi-cloud. That was great, Dave. What a great show. Thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, you guys go off and look at multi-cloud and do good. Thanks very much, Dave. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. Remember, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. He's also on LinkedIn. Uh, he's got lots of followers. I'm also on LinkedIn and Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard on Twitter and Brad Nelson on LinkedIn. You can get me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and all those lovely places in social media. So thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We've also got the weekly podcast that we do. You can find us on iTunes and Stitcher and all the other Android platforms for our podcasts. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks again for watching.